Good morning. Welcome to Swamiko United Methodist Church. We welcome all members and visitors alike. We are glad that you are here to share your faith, feelings, and fellowship. If you like more information, please check our website or Facebook at swamikoumc.org. Now, please join us for worship. O oh God, in mystery and silence, you are present in our lives, bringing new life out of destruction, hope out of despair, growth out of difficulty. We thank you that you do not leave us alone, but labor to make us whole. Help us to perceive your unseen hand in the unfolding of our lives and to attend to the gentle guidance of your spirit, that we may know the joy you give your people. Amen. Swamico Church. Uh, Dominic here. Hey, I wanted today to talk about books. And you can see from my library that I like books because uh, they're fun to read. 
I don't know what else you do with them, but they're fun to read. Anyway, um, there's an expression that says you cannot judge a book by its cover. And I wanted to talk about that today. So first thing we got is a quiz. All right. And I'd like you to tell me what color is this book? Hey, it looks red to me. So red, but what if it goes this way? Uh, well, now it's green. It's green. So sometimes something that looks one way can be another way. So an example of that is some books like this have a really cool cover. And when we talk about judging a book by its cover, I would imagine this book is about um, ferocious creatures that live in the jungle. But it's really about a cat and some grass. So it's not always the way it happens. Other books have just real plain covers to them, but yet when you open them, they have great stories about special people that perform miracles, people that uh, live in magical lands, people that have done great things, and heroes, and uh, heroines, and just people we love to look up to. That book that I'm holding is sometimes called the good book, which is another word for the Bible. And the Bible has all of those stories. And although it doesn't look very glamorous on the outside, it has a lot of good messages on the inside, and it's great to read. So, um, one thing about books is you can start reading a book, and it may not be what you want or what you think it is. And that's why we can't judge a book by its cover. And people are a lot like books. So sometimes we look at people, and we immediately judge what they're like or what we think they're like. So we need to take a step back and we need to look at what is truly inside a person versus just trying to examine their cover. Just like a great book, we wanna read it, we wanna learn about it. So before we judge people, let's read all their chapters. Let's find out what their story is and then let's decide to love them anyway. So let's pray. Dear God, creator of all, Please help us to better understand all of your creations and keep us from judging others until we get to know the story of their life. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from the book of Psalms. Psalm 86, verses 1 through 10, a prayer of David. Hear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am devoted to you. You are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. You are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. In the day of my trouble, I will call to you, for you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, O Lord, they will bring glory to your name, for you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Today's New Testament reading comes from Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 through 39. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Good morning. Greetings to you from the very empty and quiet sanctuary of Swamipo United Methodist Church. I hope and pray that you and your loved ones are doing well. Thanks to God and thanks to you, Cindy and I have been doing fine. You may have heard the saying that goes, the opposite of a great truth is also true. For example, if we say, saving money is good for a household, it's a true statement. But if you say spending money is good for the economy of the country, it is also a true statement. Philosopher Alfred North Whitehead said a similar saying. He said, 
There are no whole truths. All truths are half truths. It is trying to treat them as whole truths that plays to the devil. Having said that, I'd like us to think about seemingly self-contradictory sayings of Jesus. One time Jesus said, Peace be with you. At another time Jesus said, I did not come to bring peace to the earth. I came to bring a sword. At another time Jesus said, If you use a sword, you will be destroyed by the sword. At first glance, these sayings of Jesus seem inconsistent, incoherent, and confusing. But they are not. We have to understand that each of these sayings of Jesus was spoken at different times under different contexts. Each of these sayings of Jesus had one message, respectively, that made sense under the given circumstance. I'd like us to reflect on Jesus' message on peace, on a sword, and on the abuse of a sword. First, Jesus was all for peace. He is often called the Prince of Peace. He wants people to have a peace of mind, and he wants the world to be a haven of peace for all people in the world. That's why Jesus says so many sayings about peace. Jesus said to his disciples, Blessed are the peacemakers. Jesus said, Peace be with you. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Jesus even said to the angry storm, Peace be still. How can we find peace of mind? Jesus said, Do not worry about tomorrow. God feeds birds in the sky and God clothes lilies in the field. The Emmanuel God is always with you. So do your best and leave the rest to God. Have faith in God that God will take care of you here and hereafter. Now let us think about peace of the world. Put bluntly, we human beings are selfish and aggressive animals. Human history has been the history of wars. The powerful have dominated the powerless. The bullies have kicked the little guys around for many millennia. Many lives have been lost and many tears have been shed. Into this dark world, Jesus came as the light over the world. Jesus came to this world as the messenger of God. Jesus delivered God's message about the kingdom of God, where all people live in peace and harmony as brothers and sisters in God. Jesus spread the seeds of the kingdom of God, and Jesus had the vision and the faith that the little seeds would grow to be a great big movement that will transform the world. Now let us think about why Jesus said, I did not come to bring peace to the earth, I came to bring a sword. A sword symbolizes a weapon with which we can destroy our enemies. Jesus wants his followers to take up a spiritual sword and wage a war against the evil forces of the world. Jesus wants us to take up the sword of truth to slay the dragon of lies. Jesus wants us to use the sword of justice to kill the Satan of racism and social injustice. Jesus wants us to use the sword of love and compassion to scare away the ghosts of selfishness, hatred, xenophobia, and homophobia. 
when the bullies of our society and are beating up on little guys in our society, Jesus does not want his followers to be soft-spoken cowards or spineless pushovers. Jesus does not want us to look the other way and say that the poor and the oppressed are not our brothers and sisters. Instead, Jesus wants his followers to protest against social evils literally or figuratively. Our church belongs to the Protestant church. Protest is in our church's DNA. We protest against injustice, we protest against brutality, we protest against oppression and discrimination. Do you know why there are so many problems in the world and how we can solve these problems? I don't have all the answers, but I found the best answer in Jesus' teachings. Jesus said, if you wish to follow me, deny yourself. What does that mean? It means that all our problems boil down to one thing, which is our selfishness. For example, racism is a form of selfishness. Systemic, systemic injustice is rooted in group selfishness. Jesus said, if you want to enter the kingdom of God, First, you must get out of your self-centeredness. If you want to live an eternal life, then first you must kill your ego. If you wish to be born again in God, your selfishness must die. That's the art of being born again in Christ by letting go of our old selfish, self-centered life. I came across a nice meme on the internet. It had a good saying. It goes like this. Pandemics are real. Even if you don't know somebody who is sick. Racism is real. Even if you are not a racist. White supremacy is real. Even if you don't feel it. Police brutality is real even if the cup you know is kind and just. Your world isn't the world. Everything is not about you. Jesus taught the golden rule of human relations. Jesus said, treat others as you would like to be treated. As Christians, let us put ourselves in the shoes of the poor, the oppressed, and the underprivileged in our society. That's the way to follow Jesus Christ. A few people reminded me of the fact that it is my job to help people to become better Christians. Let me tell you how to become better Christians. The way to become better Christians is to learn from our Lord Jesus Christ and live our lives according to his teachings. Jesus' simple teachings about how to love God and how to love one another is far more important than all the hair-splitting, sophisticated dogmas, doctrines, and creeds about Jesus, which were made by church bishops hundreds of years after Jesus' life on earth. Jesus was the champion of the poor. Jesus was an advocate of the oppressed. When injustice and oppression were going on, Jesus did not look the other way to save his neck. Jesus stood up for God, for truth, and for justice. Jesus stood up for the poor, for the oppressed, and for the underprivileged. Unless we participate in Jesus' movement for justice and peace, we will be like the salt that has lost its saltiness and is trampled in the street. Mahatma Gandhi said of Christians, I like your Christ, but I don't like your Christians. 
You Christians are so unlike your Christ. A Christian faith without compassion for the poor and the oppressed is a dead faith. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. put it this way, any religion that professes to be concerned about the souls of people and is not concerned about the slums that damn them, the economic conditions that strangle them, and the social conditions that cripple them is a spiritually moribund religion awaiting burial. One last word. Jesus said, if you take up a sword, you will be destroyed by the sword. Jesus wants us to pick up a spiritual sword and slay the dragons of selfishness, social injustice, and brutality. But Jesus wants us to be non-violent protesters against oppression and injustice. If we want justice and peace, we must work for them justly and peacefully. The Bible says to us in, the, in Romans chapter, 20, chapter 12 and verses 21, Do not be overcome by evil, overcome evil with good. Let us pray. Dear Lord, help us to not look the other way when the poor and the powerless are suffering from discrimination and systemic injustice. Use us as the instrument of your justice and peace for the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please join me in the prayer as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Thank you.